What's happening, y'all? This is Andrew from Mirror Music 99, and we're going to do a bar breakdown today to go with Nas's and Lil Wayne's Never Die. Um, we're going to do a breakdown of Wayne's verse um, because that is one of the ones that's the most, probably one of the most talked about verses um, in the last month or two, um, independent <clears throat> in the non-Nas category anyway. So even though it's kind of tangentially related, people are thrilled that Wayne's come back like this and that he's come back with uh, I don't remember how many bars the verse is a bunch of bars verse that uses all the same rhyming sounds so let's get into it all right first of all I remember uh, it's been 10 or 15 years ago the classes of like 2010 11 12 that kind of era um I'm a high school teacher, for those of you who don't know. Um, those kids really, really, really love some Lil Wayne. And, like, it's never something I got into, not because I was against it, really. It was just something that was not... I, I had little kids at the time, and it was just something that kind of I kind of missed. So um, I'm starting to listen a little bit more and learn how some of these things are put together. I've heard that he is has epic metaphors um, and epic rhyming skills. So we definitely see evidence here of the, um, of the rhyming skills. Um, we're going to do a little bit, I'm going to do a little bit of breaking down like how he puts this together, um, and then we'll do a little bit of breakdown thematically too. Like Because I think a lot of people just hear, just like me from the first time I heard this, hear the the rhyming sounds and don't, don't really pay too close attention to what he's saying um but, but there's something to that too so um i've said many times in previous videos about the number like he's rhymed a whole bunch of the same sound we're actually going to count in here because um he <clears throat> is doing the two beat rhyme thing too um right here like Icons is the first example. Icons, right? So he's rhyming the I sound, the I sound, which is that written like that, the lowercase I with a line on top of it, uh, and the ah, uh, the, uh, the O-N or the ah, uh, is kind of almost ah, uh, right? So the I and ah uh sound. Icons, stepping on pythons, um, and it has, and it of course has the N in it too, right? The N, the N. Python, Kion, Zion. But, so, let's actually count how many there are. Um, so I, I can have an accurate count. Um, it's one, two, I'm not going to write the numbers in there all the time because that's going to take forever. Three, four, five, it's really six, seven, I mean, really this eight and nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, probably 31, um, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. So there's 45, if my count is correct, 45 of those little rhyming sounds, not little rhyme, four or five of the I, ah, rhyming sounds, right? Um, so many, so many. Um, now, most of them, have ends in them too. The icon, Python, Kion, Kion, Kion. He says Zion, Skyline. Have the ends in them too. I mean, there's some further down, like Lifeline, right, and By Time. Those don't have the N sound in them, but they have the 
the vowel sounds in them. That's a lot in, I don't know how many lines that is, but um, I want you to see, like the way it's written, at least on Rap Genius, on the way it was written out, that's like multiple ones in basically every single, oh, I missed one, that's 46, I missed Viron too. Um, that's 46. So first of all, get in the comments and tell me if I missed any too, um, because that's a lot, right? That's so, so many. And, and a really, a really, the verse lasts, what, about a minute, right? So that's also a lot going on in a very short amount of time. Now, if you'll remember in the video that I published, I think it's yesterday, where we actually did the um, the reaction to this never this never die song, um, I said that one of the themes that's going on here in this song generally is um, two guys that are wrestling with mortality, and not in a bad way, but wrestling with it in the sense that they want to create something that's never going to die, that's never going to disappear, that's going to outlive them when they're gone. Um, however long that happens to be, hopefully a very, very long time from now. Um, <clears throat> and so you take, you have to take the um, self-aggrandizement, um, like the pumping yourself up and talking that shit, right? You have to take that, um, which is a pretty common hip-hop and rock and roll, actually, um, kind of ethos. I mean, if you don't believe it's a rock and roll thing, go listen to the Rolling Stones for a minute. But um, you're kind of pumping yourself up, right? Um, but you also have to hear that now in the context of two people who many media outlets said were past their prime, right? That were um, not able to do it like they used to be able to do it. And both coming to accept that and to disprove the fact that they were past their prime, right? Um, you see that without getting too deep in the weeds here in romantic poetry a lot, like the poetry from the mid-1800s. Um, a lot of them were concerned about um, their short lifespans, um, like when I have fears that I may cease to be, right? I mean, that's John Keats, I think. Um, so you have... A lot of people who died young, too, actually, um, who are really concerned about their um, their art living on beyond them, right? Um, and couched in a lot of this shit-talking is a lot of ideas about I am trying to... I, I'm wrestling with the ideas of my art living beyond me, right? I mean, which is... Let icons be icons, right? Um, you have those ideas, and we ain't never gonna die. Like we ain't never gonna die. Like those ideas go through the whole song, right? Um, so he's spitting fire, right? Like I am. Eat you like Zion, like Zion Williamson. He's making a fat joke. Um, peeking at the skyline, um, which is you know at the very, very, very top, reaching for the stars. So there's lots of images here, like reaching for the stars. Um, stretch for the pylon. Where is that one? Um, where are you? Right here. Um, like those things are not just fun rhymes, but they're images of reaching for something that's beyond you, right? Um, it's interesting because reaching for the stars is a sense of straining for something that you're never going to get. I mean, you can't, um, Regardless of your rocket ship capabilities, um, you can't like stand on the ground or jump up in the air and touch the stars. Like that's just not physically possible. Reaching for the pylon is like in, in the football sense, right? Reaching for the pylon to score a touchdown. Um, but you're, you're reaching for things that are beyond you, um, and you see that um, you have to walk a fine line to survive. Instead of reading the timelines where everybody like line, nobody flow like mine. Um, coaching people like Prime as Dion, right? Um, I never bite mine, got dough like Taekwon, right? <laughs> that, that's, I think I mentioned that one in the other video. That one's hilarious. Um, have to spend, but even to spend all this money, I'm going to have to spend a lifetime, right? That is another, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of tongue in cheek, right? Um, but it's also an acknowledgement that money can't buy everything, right? Um, the idea that money 
isn't going to buy you more years, really. Does that make sense? Like, money can buy lots and lots of things to make your life easier, but it can't help you supersede death. Um, <clears throat> so, I don't want to get into the rest of this too, too much more because I'm trying to keep these videos a little shorter. But I, w I wanted to make sure that y'all understood that, I mean... Lil Wayne, especially in modern times, to me, like, what, what I'm aware of about him is that his metaphors are supposed to be amazing, and his wordplay is hilarious and amazing, and you have that going on in here, for sure, like, catch up like Heinz, like, that's hilarious, but um, there, there's a depth in here, too, that's not just a bunch of throwaway one-liners, too. He and Nas both are seem to be wrestling with the same thing that John Keats and Wordsworth and many of the mid 1800s, mid 19th century poets are wrestling with. Um, that is, I want to create something that's going to live beyond me. Hope you enjoyed that bar breakdown. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll do more of these. So take care, y'all. We'll see you next time.